So another one bites the dust. I just received word that Paul Joseph Watson has been deplatformed from Facebook and Instagram. If you don't understand by now what's going on in this country and what's going on with Silicon Valley, the Democratic Party, and the mainstream media being one huge conglomeration, conglomerate, then you might you might want to check check your pulse because you could possibly be brain dead at this point. This happens every single election cycle, every single election period. Somebody on the conservative end of the scale, not people like Linda Sarsour, not people like Ilhan Omar, who are rabid, open anti-Semites, who tweet some of the most vile things on Twitter, not people like uh, Al Sharpton, the biggest race baiter in American history. No, none of them. Nobody's banned. Not even the, the guy who openly tweeted at Ben Shapiro, making death threats against him and his family. His Twitter's still active. So what do you do in Silicon Valley? While I still have my voice, while I can still say something about it, this is what I urge you to do. Everyone who can see me and hear my voice, don't shut up. Don't let them shut you up because that's exactly what they want to do. Anyone right of center, Ask yourself, if you don't believe that Silicon Valley is a weaponized arm of the DNC and the mainstream media, why has President Trump, who is the only president in United States history to openly support LGBT rights prior to entering office, who has employed more women as an entrepreneur he had, a, he had a female CEO. His first CEO was a, was a woman back in the 80s. He's had more women in his cabinet than any other president. Why has the media attacked him with such ferocity? Why did the Obama administration get away literally with murder? No negative coverage of Benghazi, of the Fast and the Furious, of the IRS being weaponized to attack his political opponents. No coverage of that. No coverage of his failed Iran deal. No coverage of the failed Obamacare website or the failure of Obamacare itself. No negative coverage of that. No, nope, none of it. No negative coverage of a president who walked out of office and left the Middle East in flames. Syria, Libya, ISIS had spread to more territories. It, it was terrifying. The world was terrified. And he didn't even call him ISIS. He called him ISIL. ISIL. Anybody who calls, who says the, the word ISIL isn't a-hole. And he walked out of the office and just, oh, he's so wonderful. Yet Donald Trump, who was all the things I mentioned before, on top of being so iconic with black Americans that he's, his name has literally been in more rap songs than any other American icon. He is the quintessential face of the American entrepreneurial spirit. And he gets into office and all he's had is negative coverage. His policy is not even that extreme. His policy has been Clinton-esque at worst. Every president since before 
I was born has talked about a wall. Reagan talked about a wall. All of them. But Donald Trump's the racist. Donald Trump's the homophobe, even though he openly supported LGBTQ rights. Donald Trump is all these things because guess, because the media says so. If you don't know by now that the media and the DNC and Silicon Valley are one weaponized arm of this radical, psychotic, leftist ideology, I don't know, I don't know what else is going to prove it to you conservatives are being shut down. I don't, who the hell knows how long my channel is going to be up? Because I have the audacity to question a set of beliefs with Islam. Something, by the way, I've studied intensely. I don't come at anything half-cocked with half-baked ideas. I've studied apologetics extensively. Because I have the audacity to say that men and women, men are men and women are women. Because I have the audacity to question this radical, intersectional, divisive rhetoric and narrative that is pervasive throughout the left. And all the people who've been silenced from Gavin McInnes to now Paul Joseph Watson, did you really think that Alex Jones would be the, the last? That was just low-hanging fruit, y'all. That's all he was. This is biblical in scale. They are literally making it so that people who have podcasts or or who have a uh, patreon and receive their money that way can't can't use paypal these credit card companies and banks are refusing to to allow certain conservatives to to even buy or purchase. It's like the mark of the beast. I swear. That's exactly what it is. And that shows me that people like us are the ones that are speaking truth. So while I can still say it, I'm going to say it again. Don't stop speaking truth. Don't stop speaking the word of God. Because right is right and wrong is wrong. And wrong doesn't become right just because of the person's mouth that it's coming out of. This goes way beyond politics, y'all. This is the public square that we now operate in being shut off and shut down to certain people because of their ideological leanings. Because of their traditional leanings. Their conservative leanings. I'm disappointed that legislation wasn't passed when we had the House and the Senate to tamp down this this type of wrongful deplatforming. I'm disappointed that President Trump, I don't expect him to write legislation. I don't. But I'm disappointed that more wasn't done. Because like I said, this is the this is the new public public format. This is the new public square. And good people are being forced out. As New York and other states put their stamp of approval on infanticide. As politicians from Alabama said, we either kill them now or we kill them later when referencing abortion. 
as Bernie Sanders and Kamala Harris talk about terrorists having the right to vote. The voices of sanity are being shut down. And the people brave enough to say anything are being silenced. I'm going to keep speaking the truth as long as there's breath in my lungs. Because if this ship goes down in flames like it's doing right now, as it appears to be, then the last words that come out of my mouth are going to be truth and they're going to line up with the word of God. And I can rest my conscience at the end of the day. So can you rest yours? Because if you're quiet, then all you're doing is endorsing what's happening. All that's required of evil to persist is that good men do nothing. So do something.